Hello and welcome to Man Enough. Um, if you're watching this, you'll notice that it's just me and Jamie today. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, we shoot these episodes in blocks. And Liz uh, had to leave a little early today. And Jamie said, how about you and I just sit down? And I said, oh, shit, what does he have planned? <laughs> I don't have anything planned, but when the opportunity presents itself. We've never done this. We haven't done this. Almost 100 episodes. and it's We not, do it a you, lot. You and I have never done this on air. No, we do it a lot off camera. Maybe there's a version on camera that we do. Because this whole... Aren't you sick of me? <clears throat> so very lovingly sick of you. No, of course not. You know, this whole journey that you've been on to find yourself in your masculinity, what it means, what it doesn't mean, writing a book that explores who you've been, who you are, what you want to be, helping other men, um, is in fact a journey that you journey, I said, in fact, a journey that you've been on that uh, has allowed me to be on one myself. Mm -hmm. And... I think it would be good for us, just you and me, to talk about how we've grown. Mm. What all of the conversations we've had for two years with others has helped you reflect, has helped me reflect. Some things that maybe I've observed about you that are so much better. Maybe some <laughs> things that can continue <laughs> to grow and vice versa. Like, how about we start with this? Tell me something, Jay, that you think with kind words that I can be better at. Oh, you you just want to jump right into that. Why not? Hmm. You are my brother. We work closely together. Our wives are super, super tight. Your wife is my sister, mine yours. Our kids are cousins. So if there's one person that can reflect something back to me mm. that maybe you have thought in your mind but didn't didn't say. Uh, okay, I'll go here with you live on air so long as you allow me to tell you all the things that you do great. No, I don't need that. I don't feel like I've had the opportunity because we always have someone on the show, we always have a guest, and you are so great at pouring into so many people. I also think it's important that you hear some other things. So here's what I'm going to do. Because y you run our company, you know I'm stubborn as shit. And uh, I generally don't do the things people ask me to do. <laughs> I do them, but I do them in a roundabout way. So I'm going to answer your question. But I'm going to do it my way. All right. And the first thing that I'm going to tell you is that I love you so fucking much. You're one of the best friends I've ever had in my entire life. You make me a better husband. You make me a better father. I love how you parent. I love how you parent your older children. I want the relationship that you have. You're an amazing grandpa and you make me a better son. There's no version of this show, of my books, that would exist without you. When I was dating my wife, when things were hard, you were there for me. Every struggle I've had in the last 10 years, you're my first phone call. It pisses me off that I'm not your first phone call. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> I'm just joking. But it's true. You're the first person I call. You're the first person that my wife would call because you show up in the world with all of the experience that you've had, with the trials and tribulations that you've been through, with the houses that you've burned down, and you don't let it affect you. It's a part of your life. It's a part of what makes you you. And you have all of that as a reference point when you give somebody advice, and it's always from a place of love. You never scold me, you never make me feel bad about myself, you never shame me, you lift me up. You're the person I call at three in the morning when I'm having a panic attack that I've never had before. And you wake up in the morning and then you do the podcast the next morning. 
you coached me through it when I'm like two years ago. I've never had one. Wake up I'm having a panic attack. You literally coached me through it. I've never had a friend like you. And you run my company, <laughs> which is now our company. I never thought I could work with my best friend. And yet we do it. We fight. <laughs> We're stubborn idiots. And I never get sick of you. I'm never tired of working with you. Every time I talk to you on the phone, I don't, I don't, I'm, oh, I got to talk to Jamie. I look forward to it. I want to talk to you even when I'm not with you. And I fucking love that. You're amazing. You make everybody around you better. Everybody. And sometimes I'm jealous because your default mode is joy. And I've had to work towards it. But I will tell you, recently, I've been starting to experience some of what you've experienced and some of the way you live your life. And s suddenly, recently, joy is becoming more of my default. And I know that would be impossible without having you as my best friend. Mm. But I love you so much. So now I'll answer your fucking question. The thing that I think that you can work on, that you have some space to work on. And it's hard for me to say this because I also understand and it's one of your gifts. And I, I tend to think that sometimes the thing we have to work on is tricky because it's also the thing that makes us brilliant. You have everybody in your life calls you when they need guidance because you're that person. You have so many friends, whereas I'm somebody that has a very small circle. You always have life around you. You always have people around you. Your house is constantly a revolving door of how can I be of service? Sure, I'll host that party. Oh, this thing fell through. Come to our house. There's a part of me that longs for that and loves that. It's what you're great at. When you have five minutes, you pick up the phone and you call somebody who you haven't talked to in a while. You're always asking them questions. As you say, friendship is in the nothingness. And it's true. And if there was one thing that I would, as your brother, that I've observed, say you can work on a little bit, it would be, just as you say friendship is in the nothingness, I also at times can think life and the beauty of life is in the nothingness. Hmm. And I think that I'd love to see you five, 10, 15, 20 minutes not call somebody and just be with yourself in the car because as much as you water everybody else my observation sometimes is i think there could be a little extra watering for, of you because you're so because everything is about service 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 and it's the most beautiful thing about you and i just don't want you to ever get to a place where you're not doing that for yourself because i'll always do it for you and i'm talking five minutes i'm talking about a minuscule thing i don't there's not a big shift i don't have anything in you that is a big shift but in the car, when you have an urge to call somebody, sometimes I just want you to not call that person and call them later and just take a breath because you do the podcast. You run a movie studio. <laughs> you're still mixing this podcast while running the movie studio because you're trying to save money on the podcast. You have a beautiful, amazing wife. You have four kids. You have a grandchild. And you have a group of friends that adore you and I just want you to sometimes take a breath for you. That's my only feedback for you. Wow. Okay. I hear that. <laughs> I don't know if I can promise you that one. <laughs> I'm not saying to stop. <clears throat> I mean, that's what we're both. Listen, we're both Baha'is. As Abdul Baha says, eat so you can serve, sleep so you can serve, all of it so you can serve. And yes, yeah. and also rest so you can serve. That's all. All right. Five minutes, man. That's it. It could be once every week. But that's, just, that's it. And it might not even be anything. You don't have to do it. All right. Let me just address. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I just, I just made myself sit here and receive, which was starting to make me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> You've always been there for me. I feel your love. I feel you love me. I love you. I feel it deep. There's only if maybe three people in my entire life. I'm older than you. No. <laughs> that I know um, will drop what they're doing 
hands down will drop what they're doing. And you've been at the top of that list. So to hear those words and to see me, especially as a man who feels decent but struggles to continue to be decent, you know, every day it's like a practice, you know, to to be my best self, to be um, show up for my wife. And I'm able to do that so much in part because of your love. So here's what I want to say about you because you didn't ask me to. But before I do, actually, um, thank you for sharing something I can work on. I think there's got to be more than that um, because I got a lot for you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's I okay. Really, Bring it on. I really don't. I can, I can, <laughs> because I can what it. you said I need to work on is like, okay, well, is that really a flaw of mine? Like, you know, what? How can I be? Who says it's a flaw? Uh, no, no, no. But that's, I think, what I was thinking about because what we have to do for each other is say, Jamie, you can fucking be better, dude. What I just are you think doing? I just think it's about, I just think it's about filling mm -hmm. the space. And whether we're in the car or whether right. we're at home, I just have noticed okay, whether, whether, it. whether it's your phone or whether it's the TV or whether it's calling somebody or whether it's the, the, the stupid plastic toy looking thing that you smoke. Wow. The vape, whatever that the, it looks, it looks like a children's toy. It does. <laughs> what, whatever I have a the history <laughs> of long time smoking, which I've been putting, trying to put down. By the so way, Maya and Maxwell helpful. always say, "I know it." That they're going to get you at one point. They're just going to take it I from you. It. But that's like that's okay. That's I just what it is. It's just it's a, it's a thing. It's like a there's just a filling of the space, and I only say that because, and I can only notice it because I'm like that. I receive. And I have a wife who's always reminding me. That I don't have to, that the beauty is up sometimes in the nothingness, in the same way you describe friendships. Hmm. And that's it. It's just okay. you being able to take a breath without. I hear you. All right, I receive that. Golf, by the way, is, is one of my versions of that, where I get to yeah. shut down and not um, do some of those things. But yeah. okay. Yeah, except you golf, you golf during the Can I share something about you that Thursday. I. Think you can work on? Sh sure. How about this? How about I ask for it? Hey, Jamie, can you? T <laughs> I'm going to tell you anyway whether you, you ask for it. Can you tell me some things? <laughs> but that's the thing. That's there. You go. That's male. That's that's our friend. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I don't need you to be happy with me today. <laughs> You'll thank me tomorrow or next week or you know. But before I'm going to do it um, now, my way. Okay. Which is not different than yours. I know. Some years ago, in my darkest period of my life, you reached out and were like, hey man, come over to something I'm doing. I was already emerging, I was already like doing the work myself, but I, it was hard for me to, to walk with my back straight. You invited me over, I got to see you, because I didn't really, I had a negative idea about you. This just- A lot of people have. Gaston, just this beautiful man that I assumed was talented, because everybody said you were, but I hadn't witnessed it firsthand. My ex-wife used to hang out with you, not inappropriately, just like, you know, like you had circles and stuff, you know. Um, she was my wife at the time, Tara, my beautiful, wonderful friend still. And then I went and I was in this group of people. And I remember you having everybody captivated with your words. Like there was a hundred people in a room essentially talking about spiritual concepts. And it wasn't your words, it wasn't like filled with ego. It was the words of God, the words of your faith, which is my faith, also the Baha'i faith. But it, and it wasn't just the words of the faith, it was world, words of all faiths and trying to inspire and uplift all people and remind them of their purpose. And you're brilliant at it. And I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> I need to be closer to this guy. Mm. Like it was deliberate. It wasn't just like we didn't happen to just be friends and like see each other. It was like, oh no, I need to be. And I remember telling my sister, like this Justin dude is special. Mm. And then we became close. And I see how much you care about others, how much you uplift everybody, how much you inspire and see someone's a hole or a weakness or something that there's maybe need and you identify it and then you'll speak it in a way. Even on our podcast, you always say, this is why people have missed you because you do something really special, which is speak to the human heart. Certainly spoke to mine. Not jealous of you, envious of you, 
in a way because it's just natural. I think I have it too, but you just can articulate it so you beautifully. Totally and, have. And, um, which is why I'm just drawn to you. Um, when I was financially having some trouble, you and them helped so that I could stand up to my wife and not be ashamed that I wasn't enough. I always feel enough, but then, you know, there's times I guess you don't. And um, When my wife and I were dating before we got together, before we getting married, there was a moment when um, we had a little bump. She was uncertain for a second because she was getting some noise. And you didn't let that happen. You didn't let the noise get too loud. I remember you coming in and doing your thing. I don't, in the way that you could, which was hear people and course correct. You have people, there's no one that I've met that does not want to stand next to you. Nobody. Friends are work. You walk into the room not because you're some, yes, you're good looking and you have all that stuff, but a lot of people have that. Because you have a gift of inspiring the world and therefore inspiring us individually. You care so much about your children, about your wife. You show up for your wife. There might be only one person that shows up for their wife better than you. And that's Juan Pacheco, by the way. <laughs> I think you are a solid second place. <laughs> Juan's on uh, some weird level. You are so committed. You may not always get it right, but you are so committed to being a wonderful husband and father to your wife and children. You're a white man that um, doesn't defend your privilege, always willing to hear and listen. And you are really, really a fucking good man that deserves to be in the position that you are. That the men that listen to you and the women that are drawn to you are in good hands. <laughs> are in really good hands. Maybe better than anyone I've known. Because you care and you're so wise, super fucking talented. But you're a good man. And my thing that I think you need to work on is you believing it. I've never known someone that's so fucking brilliant. And I don't know if you believe it. I see you doubt yourself so often, like this imposter syndrome that just comes in, like that thinks that you're, and sometimes you overcompensate in ways I'm like, dog, he doesn't like. And it frustrates me because I'm like, what the hell? Like, he's so good at this. He's so good at not just this, but he's good at this. And yet, sometimes you need validation, which we all need validation. I don't mind the fact that you need validation. We all need encouragement. It's the fact that you need it. And I'm concerned that you don't believe it. It's because you don't know that about yourself. It's sweet. It's humble. It's wonderful in one respect. But So I'm always like, how do I... How do I take that from you? How do I, you see all around you, everybody, all these people galvanized around you, uh, troops, hundreds of people on set, uh, a company with tens and tens, we've got 25, 30 people that work for us. Sure, I'm the, their boss, but I go start my own company. They're not coming with me. No. They're following you, bro. <laughs> and yet you don't believe it. So I, I wonder what, and you do all this work, you do all this therapy. You're constantly, constantly working on yourself. You're, you travel around the world so that you can be with your wife and, and you can heal some of your wounds. Thank God you do that. And then I'm like waiting for like, when is, when is he believe it? <laughs> so what you need to work on is um, how do I get you to put, put out the noise? Like we'll do an episode Sorry, I'm just maybe I'm exposing too much. We'll do an episode of 90 minutes where 85 of them, 89 of them will be brilliant. And the one minute that is messed up, you focus on that in your eyes. And I'm like, he sees his weakness. He sees himself through that one minute and not the 89 other minutes. So my worry is for you is um, not worry because you're such a kick-ass parent and you love your children so very much. But how does Maxwell then 
learn from you to not, well, I don't want Maxwell to focus on his one minute out of the 89. I don't think he is. But if he witnesses you doubt yourself and not believe in yourself because of the one minutes, um, what impact could that have on him? That's the thing I need. I don't know. I don't know how you work on that, what that is other than I don't think it's more confirmation from me and from your wife and from your loved ones. I think it's something internal that you have to finally say, I am enough. The one minute doesn't define me. The two minutes don't define me. I don't have to defend the two minutes. That's what I got. Sure, there's little things you can do better. Like, you know, when we play games and stuff like that, sometimes you hit, you hit me below the belt. <laughs> Uh, inside joke, not really, but um, Jamie likes to make fun of me. He says I'm, I'm Steve Urkel in Gaston's body. You are <laughs> the biggest <laughs> nerd I've ever known in the most beautiful <laughs> Gaston body, Hercules. I agree with everything you're saying. Our wives are sitting in the room right now. They are. I was avoiding looking over at my wife so that I wouldn't start crying because I know she's nodding her head, agreeing with everything that. Oh, fuck. I just looked over. I know that she's agreeing with everything you're saying. I agree with everything you're saying. I had a really tricky childhood. Nobody liked me. I never felt like I fit into anything. I always felt out of place. I was bullied by the same kids on my team that would congratulate me and lift me up when I scored the winning goal. I was constantly too much for so many people and not enough for so many people. I never found my confidence and footing. I, I remember saying to my therapist at one point a few years ago, oh shit, I think I, I think I crowdsourced my personality. I don't know, do I like that music? Or do I like that music? Because that person liked that music. And I went back into my childhood and so much of who I was and became was almost like a response versus who I was. Like, a, like I'm a chameleon. Like I was trying to stay safe because it was so dangerous and hard for me. Like literally afraid to leave the classroom because kids were so mean and I'd have bullies that were waiting to beat me up and I didn't do anything. I just existed. And like you said, like when I, you didn't know me, but you, know, you didn't like me. You didn't know why I've had that my whole life. It's followed me around my whole life. And it's been a real big test for me. And I don't see, I didn't see what everybody else saw. I was, I couldn't get dates to homecoming and get made fun of and bullied and picked on and, I even write in the book, I talk about homecoming week or prom week and what a cruel thing, right? To make everybody vote for like the five coolest kids. And I remember writing in my own name. <laughs> Literally, I would write in my own name <laughs> just so that the person that was taking the votes and reading it would see my name and thought that somebody voted for me. <laughs> uh, that's really sweet. That's how lonely I was. Yeah. And so if I go and talk to my like eight and 12 and 15 and 17 year old self, there's no version of that boy and young man that could ever imagine that my life would look the way that it does. And yet somehow it does. Yeah. And so I'm on a constant journey to remember my enoughness. That's why I wrote the book. And that's why I said in the book that I have not arrived. That's why I said in the book that when my wife told me, to read my own book at the end. Right. I added it to the chapter because I need to, because I need to remember that. And that's why I surround myself with people like you. That's why I do the podcast. That's why I'm, I make the content I make. It's because that's the journey that I'm on. Well, let's get you off the off And the while track. Off the track. I'm on the journey, what I can tell you unequivocally without a doubt is that I'm waking up and feeling it more than I ever have. I've seen it. And... In some ways, that's scary to me because I've always been afraid of feeling confident mm -hmm. because in my confidence, I always made people feel like they weren't enough just by existing. And I then felt like I needed to get small. 
I'd walk into a room on a day I felt good and would leave feeling terrible mm. because other boys or even girls would then feel like they had to bring me down. And so I didn't know how to operate. I was like in a pinball machine. And so, yeah. So, and then, and then we joke sometimes because like the reason I'm Steve Urkel is because I didn't get that like peer bonding that you got. I didn't get like the group of boys that I could go hang out with because I, it was too painful. You're right. So like I didn't learn, I didn't learn the thing that like some of our other best, like Andy and other, like I didn't learn when it was like that, that line. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know. learn that line. And sometimes I take it too far. And I'm like, ah, shit, I took it too far. I'm a big nerd. You know? It's like I that hit... code for those who listen. You know, like when you joke and you banter back and forth. And you know, like, okay, I can poke fun here. I can I poke, can poke yeah. fun here. I can do here. <laughs> but we all know, like, that's too far. Yeah, every once in a while I take it, I like, take it too oh, far. Oh, you didn't know that's too I got far. a little too comfortable. <laughs> and it, but, but, but that's like also what it was like as a kid. Because I never, because I, I was like, I was trying to fit in. And then when I had those few moments when I was with the group of guys yep. and I had my opportunity, I didn't know what to do. And so I'd like make a comment or a joke or I was trying to, I was mimicking. I mean, that's how we learn. We mimic. And but I didn't have enough time in the lab. I didn't have enough practice. And so now here I am and sometimes I cross the line and you make fun of me, which is valid because I don't want to. I don't want to hit below the belt, even though you know I'm joking. But that's but that's the feedback I didn't get when I was a kid, and and that's well, and this. that's what I get now. Let's do this because we're 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 gonna wrap up soon because we we don't want to spend to have everyone listen to us just love each other. Although, <laughs> although, how sweet is it to hear you express that you love me? And the idea that some of my friends may not get that, a man look at them and see them. Mm. I want to change that. I hope for them. I think it's really powerful for another man to express that. Not your father. Of course, someone who's not, their role isn't to do that. And I think that, I think that's uh, so much of this work and the reason why we're here is, you know, we don't have it figured out by any means, oh. but we're trying. We are. We are trying. We're doing our best to hold ourselves accountable. You do something fantastic, maybe better than anyone I've known, which is, uh, I can scold you, and you will always, I can count on that night, I know tomorrow, the next day, you will ref have reflected, and you will come back. Doesn't mean you'll agree with me, but you will listen to it and come back with the truth differently than maybe you were the night before. I have never have a question I can tell Justin anything. I appreciate that about you. Um, Same. So, let's do this. Let's just end our episode on two men Loving each other. Doesn't have to be any more than that. What right. would the world look like if our boys got to grow up and feel that men were safe spaces and safe mm -hmm. places and they didn't have to prove themselves to anybody and they were comfortable in their vulnerability? What would the world look like? What kind of boys? What kind of men would they become? Better ones. How, how much safer would the world be for our girls, for our women? If men didn't have to prove anything to anybody, if they were safe to express themselves, if they could go to other men and cry, feel their sadness without someone telling them that they were weak. And I don't think that tears and vulnerability has to come at the expense of strength and power. If anything, that I think it complements it and true strength and power shows in vulnerability and yeah. the allowing oneself to feel. And just to answer, just there's one thing that you said that I just want to say. I agree. One of my biggest fears is passing my not enoughness on to my children. So every night when they go to sleep, I whisper into the ears of my kids and I tell them, but there's nothing that they could ever do to make me not love them. That they are enough just as they are. When I get mad at them or when I lose my cool or when I'm frustrated, I remind them that they're enough, that they're not bad kids, that, that I love them so much. I use myself as an example all the time that mm -hmm. I'm a work in progress 
I show them my feelings. But what I don't show them is what you just talked about now. Because they're not old enough to understand what you were able to articulate and what I'm working on. And one day I'll talk to them about it. Sure. But it's my job right now to make sure they know they don't have to perform for me. They don't have to succeed in life for me. They don't have to become my religion. They don't have to excel in sports or be the smartest kid in the class. They don't have to do anything to earn my love because the default is that I love them in the same way that I know God loves me. And I'm just working on healing that part so that I know it. I adore you. I love you. Thank you for the platform you provide and and the commitment you have to humanity, to your family, to us, your friends, to my wife for introducing me. Oh, shit. To my wife. I hate giving you that, but you did. Um, <clears throat> as I look at how it. amazing that our wives are best friends, I think that's the sweetest, oh, the thing. sweetest. and they're and how how amazing that we're here working with men and our wives are doing that with women. I know how cool is that? So sweet. I love you. I love you. Thank you um, for never missing an episode of this podcast, no matter how busy you are. I hope next year you miss a couple episodes. Listen to me. Jamie's pointing his finger at me right now just for anybody who's listening. Um, My dad, I've said this before, when I was on the ground sleeping under the bed, my dad called me and told me time to get up. Mm -hmm. You've suffered. You've done the work. Time to get up. So I'm not your dad. I'm also old old enough to be... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm not. You are enough. You don't need any more work to be enough. Keep doing the work so we can always be better. But you're enough right now. You don't need to question anything any, any ever about the two minutes. Hear me. I hear you. I love you. I love you. All right, if you um, liked what you heard, (laughs) or not, (laughs) Um, and there'll be many that won't like what they heard because they don't even know what to do with it, Uh, or or maybe there's one. Yeah, maybe that was uncomfortable for you. Come visit us again uh, (laughs) on the (laughs) manenoughpodcast.com slash podcast, Um, or you can see us at YouTube. Let's just end the podcast. Let's quit while we're ahead. Thank you all so much for listening. We love you. Thanks for being on this journey with us. See you next time. Is man enough. enough.